Church Dartford for our worship on Sunday the 11th of July. A warm welcome to you whether you join us regularly or whether this is your first time. I pray that you will know the peace and the presence of God as we worship together this morning. Before we begin there are a couple of notices that I need to let you know about. Um, Things are beginning to open back up and um, some of our events are beginning again. So This week, coming up on the 14th of July, on Wednesday, we have a chatty in the church grounds. So that will be at 3pm. Tea, coffee, cake will be served um, to you at tables. Um, And please do come along. Bring friends, bring family. Come along um, and join us as we meet together there. And then on Saturday, the 17th of July, we have the excitingly called Work Party. Now, a work party is more fun than it sounds. Um, And it's basically where we get together and there are so many jobs that need doing in the church grounds. There's weeding, there's um, litter picking, there's um, trimming back of bushes and all of that kind of thing to make the grounds beautiful and ready for our events over the summer. Um, And it's also a time to actually get together as we work together and meet up and see each other's faces. So if you can join us on the 17th of July, that's this Saturday coming at 9.30 till 12.30. You can stay for the whole time or come for as long as you're able. Uh, We'd really love to see you there as we smarten up the church grounds and do some jobs that need doing. 
And then towards the end of July, on the 31st of July, we have our church family get-together. That is for the whole church family, all of us to join together and celebrate being together. We're hopeful that by then restrictions will have eased a little um, and we can really get together and chat um, in bigger groups. But if not, we, will, we have plans in place to make that a COVID-safe event, how, whatever the restrictions are that are in place. So that is 4.30 till 6.30. Hot food will be provided. Um, but if you would like to bring a dessert to share with people, then please do do that. Um, you do need to book just for catering purposes, so we know how much hot food to prepare. Uh, we'd ask you to do that via the church office. Um, so we would absolutely love to see you there on the 31st of July, 4.30 to 6.30, um, as we join together as a church family and celebrate together. And also at the end of July and the beginning of August, on the 31st of July and the 1st of August, um, New Wine will, is running over that time and we would like to show some of those events in church. Um, so we've chosen to show the evening celebrations, so there will be worship um, on the screen, there will be good teaching, um, and again a time to come together and learn together and praise together. Um, and that will be 7pm um, till 8.30pm on Saturday the 31st and Sunday the 1st, the Saturday the 31st of July and Sunday the 1st of August. So do join us in church if you would like to do that. Um, and also just to say that as restrictions potentially ease, we are of course in discussions over what that will mean for services. Um, and the plan is that as things move forward, we will move back to our 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock service patterns on a Sunday. So we'll have two services on a Sunday morning. The timings of when that will happen um, are yet to be decided. We're waiting for the full details of the government announcement. Um, but as soon as we know, we will let you know by email, by post um, and by announcing in services. Um, and at that point, when we do that, it is highly likely that our pre-recorded services will stop and we will move to live streaming um, our 10 o'clock service on a Sunday morning to our YouTube channel. Um, it will also be available if you can't catch it on a Sunday morning. It will, of course, be available um, throughout the week as well. Um, but just moving from pre-recorded to a live stream so that people at home can kind of fully engage in what's going on in church um, and be part of that. I think that is all of our notices for today. So as we move into our worship, um, I will pray a prayer and then we'll pray our prayer together. Um, and as we move through the service, um, Felicity is doing our reading and our prayers. Um, and our worship is coming from a variety of people, drawn from people that have helped us in worship as we've pre-recorded services over the last 16 months. Um, so it's a joy to have some of those back again, leading us in our sung worship today. But first, the prayer for today. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading today comes from Acts chapter 6 verses 1 to 7. Sometime later, as the number of disciples kept growing, there was a quarrel between the Greek-speaking Jews and the native Jews. The Greek-speaking Greek Jews claimed that their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of funds. So the twelve apostles called the whole group of believers together and said, it is not right for us to neglect the preaching of God's word in order to handle finances. So then, brothers and sisters, Choose seven among you who are known to be full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom and we will put them in charge of this matter. We ourselves then give our time, will give our time to prayer, full time to prayer and the work of preaching. 
The whole group was pleased with the Apostles' proposal, so they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Pacorus, Nicano, Nor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicolaus, a Gentile from Antioch who had early been converted to Judaism. The group presented them to the Apostles, who prayed and placed their hands on them. And so the word of God continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem grew larger and larger, and a great number of priests accepted the faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 1 to 15. Our brothers and sisters, we want you to know what God's grace has accomplished in the churches in Macedonia. They have been severely tested by the troubles they went through, but their joy was so great they were extremely generous in their giving, even though they were very poor. I can assure you that they gave as, gave as much as they could, and even more than they could, of their own free will. They begged us and pleaded for the privilege of having a part in helping God's people in Judea. It was more than we could have hoped for. First they gave themselves to the Lord, and then, by God's will, they gave themselves to us as well. So we urge Titus, who began this work, to continue it and help you complete this special service of love. You are so rich in all you have, in faith, speech and knowledge, in your eagerness to help and in your love for us. And so we want you to be generous also in the service of love. I'm not laying down any rules, but by showing how eager others are to help, I'm trying to find out how real your own love is. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, rich as he was. He made himself poor for your sake, in order to make you rich by means of his poverty. My opinion is that it is better for you to finish now what you began last year. You were the first, not only to act, but also to be willing to act. On with it then, and finish the job. Be as eager to finish it as you were to plan it, and do it with what you now have. If you are eager to give, God will accept your gift on the basis of what you have to give, not on what you haven't. I am not trying to relieve others by putting a burden on you, but since you have plenty at this time, it is only fair that you should help those who are in need. Then, when you are in need, and they have plenty, they will help you. In this way, both are treated equally. As the scripture says, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you to Felicity for reading those passages for us. And I'll be honest, as I sat down to prepare this sermon, I really struggled to um, know what I wanted to say. What was God saying to us um, through these passages today? And I couldn't work out, um, even when I figured out what I thought God wanted to say, I couldn't quite work out how to say it. Um, and I sat in my study and I prayed, I went for a walk and I prayed, I nearly cried tears of frustration because the words were not coming. I prayed some more. Um, and then I remembered an article that I read a year ago, which summed up how I was feeling then and actually sums up a lot of my feelings over the last year. And feelings as we open up again as well. And what I'm going to do is actually read you that article now. It's an article written by Helen Coffey, um, and it was published in The Independent on the 15th of June 2020, so over a year ago. And it's called, it's entitled, Dazzlingly Diverse and at Times Infuriating. Going to church is what I've missed most during lockdown. And I'm going to read it actually almost word for word um, and I'd like you to bear with me as I do that because I promise I will tie it back to the readings um, and the theme of this service which is need and availability um, as we come to the end of that. So this is what Helen wrote in June 2020. I've inadvertently found a new hobby during lockdown. I spend every Sunday staring at my computer in tears. It's not my intention to cry. I haven't turned to some new form of therapy in these times of crisis that require me to let it all out via my eyeballs, but it can't be helped. A familiar face pops up on the screen, says a few words, and I find myself blubbering like a baby. 
I don't sob when I see my friends over video call. I don't weep when I ring my mum. I don't even lose it when I zoom with my little nieces aged one and four and clock their gummy smiles and chubby limbs that by right should be flung around me in a cuddle. Yet for some reason, every Sunday at church, the new live stream digital version I attend from my bedroom, I cannot contain my emotion. It just comes pouring straight out of my tear ducts like a burst pipe. It's hard to communicate just what an important community church can be for those of us who do subscribe to the whole God thing. The relationship is distinct from friendship for a start. Of course, there are plenty of friendships that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. But there's a reason you'll sometimes hear it referred to as someone's church family. A reason for the cringe sounding term brothers and sisters in Christ. It's because a family is what the often ragtag bunch of individuals that make up a congregation most closely resembles, with all the dysfunction that it entails. There's the church equivalent of your mad uncle, who you're always vaguely worried you'll get stuck talking to by the refreshment table. There's the incarnation of your brother's overly earnest girlfriend, who keeps banging on about why she's boycotting WhatsApp until you want to rip your own ears off. And then there's the calming presence, most like a wise older sibling, the one who tells you to breathe deep and let it all wash over you. But it's not just this last person in the lineup that you appreciate. You don't love your church family in spite of the people who occasionally rub you up the wrong way. You genuinely love it because of those people. You'd never have met them otherwise, never have got to know them, never have come to accept them, well, even embrace their quirks, never have become an infinitesimally better person just by learning to love someone you don't always like. And that's why it's like a family. You love them even when you don't. And you know deep in your bones that those who are far from being kindred spirits have likewise learnt to appreciate you too. They've got your back in an unspoken, unparalleled, unparalleled way. They're not expecting you to be anyone but yourself, and that is the most reassuring feeling of acceptance imaginable. I didn't quite realise the magic of this mishmash of bonds before lockdown started, as everyone quickly became aware after life transformed into something unrecognisable, there's so much we take for granted. Church was just something I did on a Sunday, unthinkingly, unappreciatively. It was only once I couldn't sit in a room with those people, sing with them, pray with them, laugh with them after the service. Only once everything was stripped away and I felt a gnawing hole in my gut that I started to fully understand the scope of those relationships. And so I cry on a Sunday now. The technology is great and allows a service leader, musician and the vicar to lead the whole shebang from their respective homes. It's incredible how quickly we've all adapted and moved online. But seeing a close friend opening the service with a funny story and knowing she can't see me catch her eye and laugh hollows me out. Singing weedily along to the hymns and songs alone in my room when I remember being enveloped in a cacophony of rich, joyful harmony leaves me flat. At some point, it all becomes too much, perhaps simply acting as a cathartic outlet for all the emotions provoked by this overwhelming new world. I feel my cheeks get damp again. There are so many things to look forward to once this ends. Long, lazy brunches with good friends, the burst of delight in picking up my niece and swinging her round in the park, the tingle of anticipation as the curtain lifts at the theatre and you see the stage. I can't wait for it, all of it. But the thing I can't wait for most is that first normal service back with my church family, in all their dazzlingly diverse, brilliant and occasionally infuriating glory. That first time back in the building, when I catch each eye and grin and maybe even hug, the first time we lift our voices high, so high the music swells and bursts out the doors and onto the street for all to hear. Because we are here and we are alive and we have missed each other desperately and been missed in return. So much so that when I inevitably get stuck talking to that mad uncle by the refreshment table afterwards, I will simply listen and smile and thank God we are finally 
all together again. My goodness. We're not quite there yet, are we? Discussions, no doubt, will take place over the next few weeks in this church, in every church, in the hierarchy of the Church of England, about singing, about masks, about refreshments, hugging, communion, all of those things that have not been the same. And one thing we need to remember as we have those discussions, and as the guidance is released, whatever that might say, is that we need to treat each other with compassion as we do it. Some will be desperate for things to get back to normal. Others will be fearful. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, we need to love each other really well through these next few weeks and months. Because we remain a dazzlingly diverse and at times infuriating family. And so coming back to our readings today, in that family we work together for the Kingdom of God. Sometimes that means we air our grievances lovingly, like the church in Acts. Sometimes it means someone has to step up and do a job that won't otherwise be done, like serving on tables for the widows in Acts, or loading the dishwasher in a family, or doing any of the myriad of jobs in church life that just need to be done, not because they fill us with utter joy, but because we know that everyone needs to play their part in this weird little family. So maybe you do the social media, or mow the lawn, which I think someone is doing right now, or fill out the risk assessments, or you do the spreadsheet to check everyone is up to date with their safeguarding training. Or maybe you do those joy-filled jobs that do fill your heart, and you serve at the tables when we have our chatties, and you make tea and coffee for people and you laugh and you smile as you do it. Whatever it is, we step up, and it's sometimes not for the love of the job, but it's for the love of the family and the love of God. And in the midst of all that, we give according to what we have, not according to what we do not have, which was our second reading. Some of us might be so exhausted that the thought of doing another job, or even picking up one that we laid down at church when church shut last year, just makes you want to run away and cry. And if so, we welcome you to the family who will love you and care for you as you heal and as you regain your strength. We do not and we cannot give out of what we do not have, and we don't ask anyone to do that. When you're too exhausted to do some of those jobs that needed to be done, the family steps up and others pick those up. Some of us might be struggling financially over the last year. And so we have a community fund um, that others have given to so that we can stand together in that too. And if you need that, speak to Richard or I um, and you know we will stand with you in those issues. Some of us might be itching to get back and get involved and do something, anything. We don't really know what we want to do or what jobs need doing. Well, the good news is we have a team of people who would love to chat through with you what jobs there are, where is your heart, what could you do, what might you love to do, what might you learn, want to learn to do. Um, how could you serve in this place, this community, this family? Let us know and we would love to chat with you about that. Because, my dazzlingly brilliant family, we stand together in all of this, and we stand in the love and the grace of God, loving each other and working in his kingdom together. Amen.
Dear Lord, thank you for the wisdom of the scientists for discovering the vaccines and for those who are accepting it for the safety of all. We must pray, pray for those who are refusing on grounds of the conspiracy theories or believing it is against their religion. I want to thank you, Father, for keeping me and my family safe in your care. Although currently isolating, we have extended family, friends and neighbours who in call on any time should we need any help. Sadly, there are an infinite number of families and individuals in the UK living in need of food, shelter, clothing, love, and so the list grows. Often those in greatest need are ashamed to ask for help or maybe decline it due to pride. As Luke records in chapter 11, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find. Lord, we pray that those in need will be open to this suggestion and receive the help they so desperately need. We very much take for granted in the UK our NHS, running water, flushing toilets, things that people in poorer countries see as a luxury. I can pray that we can all be more gracious and appreciative of what we have. Father, I pray that those who can make themselves available to help those less fortunate than themselves. It may be practical help they can give, emotional support, be a listening ear, or give financial support if possible. I thank you, Father, that I'm a member of Christ Church Dartford, where my church family are unstinting in their love and generosity in the wider community. Amen. And so as our time here draws to an end, I pray a blessing over you as you go out this week and think about how you might fit into this family and do some of those things that need doing. Draw your church together, O God, into one great company of disciples, together following our Lord Jesus Christ into every walk of life, together serving him in his mission to the world, and together witnessing to his love on every continent and island. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us. Remain with us always now and forever. Amen. i
Christ be. Christ be.